Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for being with us for yet another webinar this month. I think this is for sure a record. Uh, maybe in our library heydays, we had uh, a couple more each month, but uh, this, is, this has been a pretty solid, solid uh, couple of months here with these webinars. Uh, my name is Maureen Gribble with UE Systems, and today we are pleased to have Jeff Hay with RDI Technologies here to talk about motion amplification really really cool technology if you've seen it in action at any of the trade shows um it's it's really really something to see so so we're looking forward to, to him sharing that with us today um just a little bit of info before we we turn it over to jeff um you know as we've mentioned if you've been on these um the past couple of weeks um, you've heard this, but we'll just reiterate it. And for those of you that are that are new, we just want to make sure um, you know that in this crazy time, as we're all dealing with with these changes and and our lives kind of all being turned upside down, um, we just want everybody to know that you know we are at UE Systems um, and our friends at RDI and Iridicia, we're all here to to be a support. Um, you know, think of us as your personal ultrasound trainer. So if you're already a customer or if you've got issues with software, you want some help, um, just learning the software better, help with any of your instruments, your programs, whatever it may be, um, we're all home and off the road and, and ready to hop on a, a webinar or a Zoom or whatever you want to do and, and, and help you through it uh, and spend that time with you guys because that's, that's what we're here to do right now and, and kind of just all, all hands on deck. So keep that in mind. Definitely reach out to us if you want to take advantage of that. Um, we certainly love having people to talk to every day. So, so don't hesitate. We're, we're really um, willing and able and excited to, to uh, talk to people other than our families. Um, and then I'll also just remind um, that this is, there, there's kind of another <clears throat> initiative going on in the background with Iridicio and friend support. So those of you that know Iridicio, Sean Eisenhower, um, Darren Wyckoff, those guys, um, you see them out and about at all the trade shows and, and conferences. Um, but they've got a, um, a web page that you can sign up for um, with additional, and it, you know, aside from these webinars that we're doing, they've got some no-cost projects that they can help you with, videos, e-learning, things like that. Um, even if ultrasound or motion ampl amplification is something you guys are wanting to kind of dive in on, they can kind of give you some tools to help you um, take some technology and actually get running with it. So just trying to find ways to, you know, things that we can do, positive impact that we can make um, at a time where it, it maybe doesn't feel so positive. So um, we want to try and find those silver linings and, and see what we can do to, to, to make an impact and, and hopefully at the other side of this, you know, be able to get, get off and running and, and uh, look back on these days and know that we made the most of them. So um, there's that website there, help.iridicio.com, and all the webinars that we're doing, those are all listed there as well, so kind of a one-stop shop. Um, just some housekeeping as well, so we are recording this, so if you've got a hop-off or if you've got a colleague that, that wanted to see it and, and missed out, uh, this will be recorded. We'll have it up on our YouTube channel, on our website. I'm sure um, RDI will put it up on theirs. I think your DC has been putting these up on their site as well. So multiple different places that you can check this out afterwards. Uh, we do welcome questions. So you can type those into the questions box and I'll be keeping an eye on those. I'll get those questions tossed over to Jeff um, throughout the session if it makes sense or of course we'll have some time at the end. Uh, we've got a pretty, pretty large crowd of folks with us. So if we don't get to every question, which I'm sure we will not, um, we do have a way of getting all those questions uh, over to Jeff and his team so they can follow up and, and make sure everybody gets their questions answered. So please feel free to take advantage of that uh, kind of interactive feature, if you will. Uh, and then just, you know, I usually am just on here telling folks to just bear with us if we have any audio or, or uh, Wi-Fi issues because we are doing this live, but now we've got the added uh, hazards of, of children and dogs and husbands and whatnot in the house. So if any fights break break out or anything, just, just bear with me. I'll, um, I'll kick them all out uh, as quickly as I can. So anyway, it's, it's a crazy time for all. But uh, with that, I'm going to turn the screen over to Jeff. And uh, Jeff, we'll let you take it away. 
Okay, thanks, thanks, Maureen. And I'll um, I'll get my screen up here. Um, I will um, also add to that uh, kazoo's. If you hear any kazoo's in the background, my son on my last webinar decided to um, find the kazoo and started uh, started playing that uh, nice and loud. So um, anyway, yeah. So I'll uh, go ahead <laughs> and um, uh, jump in here and. Um, uh, start but I uh, just wanted to thank uh, UE Systems and Marine for, for hosting this and putting this all together um, I know lots of people are homebound but um, it's still a lot of time to ask for you to take out of your schedule uh, for these webinars so um, I appreciate the time um, for doing that so um, okay so I'll go ahead and get going um, just a little bit about myself um, um, I'm uh, my name is Jeff Hay I'm the uh, CEO of, of RDI Technologies and um, so my interest, you know, I've got a background of interest in photography, so it's not kind of no surprise that I find, find, find myself here. Um, but in my background in physics, um, optical physics, I actually started in astronomy, um, you know, and quickly found my way out of that, uh, just I think because I wanted to, you know, find, be gainfully employed. Um, the, the, it's interesting because the, the problem is very similar. Um, you know, we use cameras to measure something that's far away. Um, you can't go to the object, you can't touch the object, and all the information you want to find out about the object, you have to get from the camera. And so in one case, it might be a star light years away, and in another case, it might be a motor or a pump that's that's vibrating in front of you. So um, in remarkably similar in, in that respect. Um, the technology was originally, um, you know, I started doing this, you know, in the, you know, 2005 or so, um, originally for Department of Defense and, and DHS. So they were interested in surveillance and, and, and bridges and, and things like that. And, and then quickly started developing applications that, that we knew could, could have interest in the machinery market. And so I left there and, and started um, working for a large service company in the, in the industry, a large condition-based monitoring company. Um, for a few years, and then and then went full time within the RDI to to bring the bring products to the market. Uh, so anyway, getting straight to ample uh, motion amplification. Um, what is motion amplification? Well, you know, in in a nutshell, um, it basically takes motions that you would not be able to see with the video um, and makes them visible in in the um, in the video. So the right, you'll see maybe some side by sides in this presentation. The right-hand side is always going to be the amplified video. The left-hand side is a video. It's just unamplified. And so um, that's what you really see. That's what you see with your eyes. So if you look at a car engine, you would essentially see, you know, not, not a whole lot. But with a motion amplification video of a car engine starting, you know, you can, you can actually see that. So um, there's the, there's the uh, car, car engine starting. So if, if uh, cars aren't your thing and maybe motorcycles, um, you can look at a Harley. Um, but I, I think I'm, I didn't shoot this, but I'm told that I don't think you really needed a whole lot of amplification um, for a Harley. But, um, but anyway, nonetheless, there's a, there's a Harley motion amplified. Um, so a little bit about the technology. Um, so, you know, I've got some text here, but, but on the right hand side is, is kind of a, a, a picture, uh, you know, of what we're trying to do here. We're, we're really taking um, sort of what you see there, a spectrum, um, and really turning it into that video. So, um, in, in some way, um, you know, maybe some of you know um, what that spectrum is telling you um, that, you know, you might maybe it takes some level of expertise to be able to diagnose that um, to tell you what those peaks mean. But really with a, with a, a motion amplification, you can just see it right in the video, you know, and you can see the misalignment across that coupling. Um, one side's going up while the other side's going down and it, it becomes sort of more of a universal, universal language. So we're really... Um, Making you know motions that are visible, um, invisible by the high, by the um, not by my by the eye, and making them visible um, to the eye. So essentially, turning it, each each pixel in the camera into a sensor, um, and then making a visualization of that, and then we can quantify that as well. Um, just a little bit else, um, you know, in terms of the um, the use or the benefits. Um, you know, if you've got sort of go into traditional vibration. Um, you know, if you if you put one sensor down, that tells you a lot of information, and you get a lot of value from that. Um, you can put a second sensor down, and then you can do interesting things like phase, and you get more, and then a third channel, um, and then you can start to outfit a um, an asset. But it becomes you know kind of expensive and um, and um, cumbersome if you start adding more and more sensors um, to to an asset. So 
um, by the time you're up to a dozen or two, you know, that's that's hard to manage in data and in the uh, collection. Um, but with motion amplification, you can think of the pixels being the sensor and you add one pixel, two pixel, a megapixel, you know, is, is um, you know, kind of a thing of the past even um, where we're, we're off to lots of megapixels. So you can add pixels um, and then increase your sensor coverage across the entire asset uh, very, very simply. Um, so a little bit about some technical um, specifications. We're really measuring fundamentally uh, displacement. I mean, that's really the fundamental displacement, that um, me displacement measurement. Um, and so that makes it really, um, that makes it really handy as a complementary tool to accelerometers. You know, accelerometers are a, a, a very common um, uh, device or measuring device in this in this industry and so now we add this displacement uh, measurement and it's a really good complement um, the the system's capable of live motion amplification and I'll do a demonstration of that you set the camera down and instantly you can see the amplification um, you can amplify up to 500 times um, and then you can show the overall and frequency based motion so so you're not just limited to show one frequency or another or combination um, the first video that you see you know, is overall, it's all the motion. So that's really important uh, because you need to make a decision about what you're looking at and to be able to see them all. Um, so uh, it's really small detection capability, um, you know, 0 0.01 mils. So really the system's capable of seeing any anything of interest um, um, that of, of any concern. Um, and then some, some of the, the frequencies there that you can measure too. Um, and then also it measures two axis. So, you know, you get an up, down, right, left measurement and it's synchronous across the entire image. So that's really kind of cool because now you can do phase relationships. Everything is taken at the same time. So you can make a measurement in the right side of the image and the left side of the image and compare those. And then also has the capability of measuring shafts while they're, while they're rotating. So a lot of people use it for actually measuring sort of what we call the operational run out, while it's in operation, how much that, that shaft is, is moving. Um, so a little bit about the sort of the family of what, what they are. The Iris M is sort of the, I would say the sort of the standard motion amplification camera. Um, you can you, you can add an MX to it. That's really just adding you adding higher frequency. So if things are moving faster, you can see those things. Um, and then also the uh, the CM, which is stands for continuous monitoring. Three cameras simultaneously collecting can do 90 minutes of, of data um, per camera. Um, in buffer, so it's kind of like a DVR. So that's kind of handy for for lots of different reasons. If you want to set something on it, um, it even does triggering with um, with optical sensors. So you draw a box and it will monitor that area continuously. And if something moves um, in that area by a certain amount, it, it saves the video like pre and post that trigger. So so again, that's that's for you know you sort of a crash part. You put it on and you can put it in. Um, Put it on an asset and, and monitor overnight a week two weeks however long you want um, some of the benefits um, some of the benefits of the technology uh, it really is a, a, a root cause um, complementary tool so um, you know in that in that sense you know it's not motion amplification is not something that's going to replace the existing tools you're still going to have your accelerometers you're still going to have your ultrasound you're still going to have your infrared it's really just another tool in the toolbox um, that complements those other tools. And, and I'm gonna talk through some of that and hopefully you know, um, show you how, how it becomes a complementary tool. Um, it's, it's a really ad advanced and sophisticated data analysis piece, but I also like to think of it as one part data analysis, uh, one part communication tool. Because one of the one of the nice things about it is that it can really help communications between technical and non-technical users. It's really easy to show someone um, that um, something's misaligned or something's loose just by a video. I had one user tell me that he had been trying to get something fixed for for three years, and he knew what the problem was. He knew what the problem was. He had been working on it for three years, and um, he couldn't get action taken because the people that were that had to buy into it um, were not um, technical and they didn't really understand. And so um, shortly after he started using the camera, he was able to show the video and then immediately got, got that asset fixed. So that's a really powerful piece of that. Um, again, improved safety, you know, it's totally non-contact. You know, you can make a, an absolute displacement reading uh, from a distance without even going near the asset. Um, and then sort of plan shutdowns, every facility has a plan shutdown. 
um, uh, generally, maybe maybe not now, right now, but um, but it's a way to be able to categorize your bad actors, figure out what's what's the severity is, and kind of come up with that plan. And then also, you know, which is which is um, kind of relevant now is collection during operation. You know, everything uh, that can be set down, you don't have to make contact with anything or go near it. So it gives you an advantage to be able to um, be able to collect um, collect data while while things are operating. And and then the, a diverse application set. And I'll go into this in in more detail as well um, with um, uh, you know piping and and these different. Um, um, things like structures and, and processes and things like that, where, you know, because of the nature of it being a camera, it allows you to go to some new areas um, um, and get more coverage across your assets. Um, you know, this thing sets up in a few minutes, you know, and that's that's one of the things, maybe less than 10, you can be set up and going. And again, I'll give a demonstration of this um, here shortly. Uh, and then again, actionable information. I think that that's a really... Um, a really powerful part of it is that you can do something with the videos. You can share them and show them and send them via email. Real easy to um, to be able to communicate this information to um, to the people that you need to get buy-in to be able to sort of make the uh, make the decisions um, to fix your assets. A little bit, you know, about the the industries. It's it's you know it doesn't have you know one um, preference into where people use it. Um, anywhere from you know pavement purple. Pul um, pulp and paper to water treatment, um, you know, automotive and, 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 you know, anything essentially that, that's moving. It's a, it's a very fundamental measurement type. It's measuring displacement. So um, it sort of finds its home in, in a lot of different areas. So let's think about a little bit about a typical acquisition process. So this might be a traditional where you're making vibrations, you know, inboard, outboard, uh, vertical, horizontal, axial, that that sort of thing. So the idea would be normally you would kind of do coverage like this, uh, you know, sort of notice that the base is not being measured. There's areas that really it's just not it's it's time prohibitive to be able to make measurements in those locations. Um, but, the, you know, this is kind of the paradigm with um, with motion amplification. So, um, you know, you're covering you have continuous coverage across the entire asset. You know, it's a really cool tool that you don't know what you don't know sort of thing. And I'll talk about that later, but um, um, more in detail. But sometimes you see things that you weren't even looking for. You didn't know were there and it wasn't what you were focusing on, but it ends up being the biggest problem. Um, again, because you're you're looking at just more than one location. Um, so some of the I, I said core core pieces with this. Um, it, it's the, um, the filtering here. So you can actually go through, you notice there's a spectrum. You can draw a box anywhere in the video um, and you can make a measurement and it gives you a time waveform in both the X and the Y and a frequency spectrum in orbit. Again, anywhere, you can draw as many as you want and do comparisons um, uh, across you know, different areas. But this is filtering. You can create any combination of filter that you want if you only want to show certain frequencies. And I'll walk through a short video here um, that I'm going to show you um, about about filtering, uh, and so um, so what's going on here is um, let's see if that's playing here. Uh, so these screens are moving at different frequencies, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to filter um, for for an individual uh, for an individual frequency here, um, and then show you kind of the power behind the filtering process. So what we're doing is we're picking a frequency here, and um, we're going through and and filtering that for uh, for that uh, for that uh, for that frequency. And then um, now we can see um, we've got the peak here. We made a measurement. Um, we're going to slide the sliders over, and we're going to pick um, pick an individual frequency here. Uh, and then we're going to go through and, um, and process for that frequency and show just that one, uh, show the, just that one uh, frequency. And now you can see that um, the the video here. So um, I'm waiting for the. I think there's a slight delay in the video. So I'm gonna, uh, so now we're showing only the pump motion here. And then we can also do the same for the um, the footage for the individual screens as well. So we're going to measure that. So we'll measure the um, the pump, and then um, and then show the show the spectrum for that. 
So you can get a, you can, again, you can get the spectrum and the time waveform. And then there's the motion amplification footage for the, uh, for the pump. So again, we're going to now isolate a the nine nine twenty five RPM. And then now we'll isolate the eight uh, the eight forty one RPM. Okay, so um, that's just a little bit about the um, the, the filtering there. Um, again, here's a um, this would be a uh, you know a typical acquisition that we'd do of a uh, gearbox uh, that would be moving, uh, and then we can filter that for, for example, the uh, the output uh, frequency of the of the gearbox at two hertz. And then um, here's the 25 hertz for just the just that motor. And then again, here's another another frequency in the background. The uh, uh, something that you know kind of uh, was not very obvious, but was actually the conveyor uh, bouncing there. Um, you know, which actually ended up being the, the biggest issue of all. Um, what was kind of un, unbeknownst to them. Um, there's also the ability to um, to add stabilization, so that becomes important, especially if you're on a on a um, uh, platform that's moving, and you know you can't always just filter it out. Sometimes they're at the same frequency, and so the stabilization works to remove the the camera shake. And so um, a little bit of a demonstration and how that works. Um, it's able to go through, and and I'll show some of the stabilized footage where you can kind of see the. The, the the motion overall and then um, and then the the stabilized footage um, and then here's another another uh, shot here of the uh, Stabilization footage here. Uh, the now this was uh, again all on a roof, so you can imagine the the vibrations that would occur from the floor. Okay, so let me do a um, a quick demonstration here. Um, I think there's again there's slight lag, so I apologize if I kind of get ahead. I'm trying to watch the uh, the audience view here to make sure that um, uh, that it, that it's caught up. So um, okay, so let me do a demonstration here. I'm going to do this live of the of the of the software. I'll pull the acquisition um, software over here. Okay, so this is the acquisition software. Again, it's pretty pretty simple um, point point and shoot. I'm going to turn this rotor kit on. And then uh, again, I mentioned you can do live motion amplification. So so if I do that, you can just press this button here, and then now you've got live um, live motion amplification. So you can see the rotor kit move uh, here, and then you can amplify it, and then see it bounce. And you can increase or decrease the amplification, slow it down if you want. And then again, so this is really handy. You can you can um, just immediately um, scan assets. You can move this um, you can move this around. You know, if you want to look at you know sort of uh, the base, um, you can scan around and look at the base here. Um, or if you, for example, move um, over to this side, you can sort of move that part of the base. 
see that part of the base or just anywhere. So again, you can just immediately set this um, camera down and then get the um, the amplification um, showing, you know, very uh, very easily and scan entire assets in a matter of seconds. And then I'm going to take a short recording. So I'll do a, um, a short two second recording here and then demonstrate some of the capabilities. So I'll turn the live amplification off because I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do a recording. Um, so I'll do two seconds here um, really quickly. So I'll go straight into motion amplification here. Okay, so now one thing to notice is, is that in ampli uh, motion amplification, it takes zero time to process anything. So I can go straight into amplification like this um, and then see this uh, very, very quickly. Um, and then you can make measurements just like this. So if I wanted to make a measurement here, I could do that. If I wanted to make a measurement here, I could do that. Um, again, that's all, that's all instant. Um, and then to be able to do sort of phase measurements, I can drag and drop um, one onto the other. And I can see that those two areas are pretty close to being in, in phase. So you on that bottom on that bottom graph, you can see that, that they're in phase. So again, a real easy, um, easy way to be able to do this um, really, re really quick. Um, so that's just a little bit about the, 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 um, the software and Turn the, I'll turn the rotor kit off and being able to see um, how, how that works and kind of the speed at which, you know, you can kind of get that. Um, again, the, the live amplification is, um, is uh, fairly, fairly handy for being able to look at things like pipe work and that, that sort of thing. Um, okay, so um, let's talk about the, um, um, the integration into a reliability program and how that, how that works with um, uh, some, of the, some of the use cases. Um, so, here we're going to talk about um, you know bad actors, some some different use cases with bad actors and complex assets. Um, getting the um, getting the uh, the uh, the motion amplification used and the the technology higher on the uh, the PF curve or in this case the DIPF curve. So in the design and installation and um, commissioning phase, um, how it's complementary to a route based method. Um, and then new types of assets with the lack, lack of coverage. So things like pipes and bases and foundations, they really largely go, can go unmonitored because they're a challenge. Um, and then also um, to broaden the coverage. So maybe lower on the criticality scale. So maybe you've gone through and you've got your routes that you're monitoring certain assets, but maybe there's certain things that are left off those, or there's certain things that don't get as, as, um, as big of a look um, or get covered at all. But the speed at which the technology can work um, with being able to go down and set it down and see things live and be able to measure, you know, on the spot gives you ability to look at a whole new level of assets in your in your facility. And then also a comprehensive scan. You really don't know what you don't know sort of thing. So it's um, it's remarkable what you can look at and see and get out and with the camera, with the motion amplification and then see things that you didn't know um, were were uh, were occurring. So. So let's see. I'm going to drop uh, I'm going to drop the resolution here on the screen and see if that helps with the, the playback here. Okay. So um, so we'll go into this. Um, so we're going to first bad actors and um, complex assets. So this is a case study. Um, this is a bad actor case study from Lo Yang in, in Australia. Um, they had invested $120,000 into this re, into this asset over 11 years. And the reason why that number is kind of so high is because um, is because the um, the OEM was still on the hook for this. And so um, because of that, they sort of got them to keep doing doing repairs on it for that time. And then there's about 500 man hours expanded on this, and the problem still existed. And so motion amplification was used. And then within an hour, they were able to identify the root cause um, of it. So we're going to walk through that, um, through videos of that. Um, but, it, but what it ended up being, and you can watch through this, is a structural integrity of the base. Um, so this was, um, um, they were able to capture that and understand where that problem was. 
uh, and then now they're confident that this asset has been repaired properly. Um, what one of the real kickers was that prior to motion amplification, um, they had planned to do a whole new set of of repairs with this, and it, as it turns out, um, those repairs would not have fixed it. So that that 120,000 would have ticked up just a little bit. So this um, the MA allowed for a quick root cause and and identify um, identify the issue. So here we're going to look at it and um, see this um, this uh, motor pump combination. So here you can see um, the uh, uh, the pump motor. I mean, immediately you can kind of see with this um, with, with with this issue of um, what's going on with it um, as it's uh, sort of sort of moving so much. Um, so we're going to take a look all the way around it. You can kind of see it move on its base. Um, and then we'll take a look. This is pretty common, the way that the person scanned all the way around. Um, and the, um, the, uh, the, you know, you're going to get a good look at the, you're going to get a good look here right now at the base issue. Uh, and then we'll, we'll show some measurements where they actually went in to confirm this. So you can kind of go ahead and see this. This is this this is one of the the shots that that actually clued them in to um, where the corrective action needed to happen. We'll take a closer look here. And then um, here's a shot on the other side. As well. So I, this shot I like um, coming up here uh, because it shows I think where they put a lot of their attention. Um, they, they really were chasing the vibration, just finding the the areas where the high vibration levels were and um, stiffening it. You know, I mean, and, and which could have actually caused more problems than it than it than it helped in that it transferred some of the energy back into this. Um, this motor and pump. So, but you can see where they had added, you know, braces and supports, probably because the vibrations were just high there. And so um, here, um, you know, you can see that um, where they made the measurement. Um, I'll see if I can highlight this um, where my mouse is here, kind of moving. Um, but there's a red. There's a red square on that base and a blue square on that base that you can see. And what it turns out is on the upper, there was about two mils peak to peak. And then on the lower, there was 0.4 mils peak to peak. So there was a difference there. One was one was moving more than the other, which clued them in on the base being insufficient. Um, and so the root cause was identified. Here, the root cause was identified. Vibration was reduced from uh, over half an inch per second to about 1.15 uh, inches per second. And this was before um, before um, aligning it, you know, um, doing an alignment. Again, um, I didn't get the numbers after the alignment, um, but I think there would have been expect expectation for those values to go down. So here's some before and afters, um, which I think are always um, really cool to be able to get to see because lots of times in the after shot or the after um, data collection, people don't always want well, once they're fixed, it's fixed. They don't return to it. So a little bit of a before and after. Here's another before and after. So this video is not the same, um, but I like showing it because um, it shows the repairs. So you'll see the repairs and it's just a nice video to show, you know, how simple the repair is, but it's not always obvious. You know, it's it's hindsight's 2020 and a lot of times. Um, so it's really easy to see it once you see it in the in the video um, to think you should have saw it all along. But that's not not always the case. So here's um, another um, sort of hard, hard asset, um, bad actor kind of hard asset to, to look at. This is a structural issue. Um, where one of those towers was moving at 1.4 hertz. Um, so this looks like a fairly um, big 
you know, sort of a fairly big problem. Um, but as it turns out, um, the the problem wasn't as as complicated as you would think. Um, in that um, the you know the frequency there happened to be the same frequency as an agitator. Um, so really, it was as easy as moving that that for changing the frequency of the of the agitator. Um, here's another here's another challenging one of a um, torsional resonance in a um, in a, a pump. Um, and this is you know this is tricky. They had quite a few sensors on this already, um, over 20 sensors, but they couldn't capture this um, torsional mode, and so they brought the camera out as the only way to really capture it in the scenario they were under. So again, they were able to capture it because they could see it and identify it. And again, this was one of those identifying the mode, identifying the frequency, and then knowing what frequencies they need to get through while they're bringing this thing up um, um, online to, to not hit those frequencies. And then one one more um, one more, which is uh, this is a uh, a roller coaster, um, and this is actually the roller coaster when the coaster goes over and it's lifting. So again, um, this was a scenario where you know um, no can't can't go in and, and make contact, um, especially while it's in operation. Um, also, you've got to worry about you know people seeing you if you're in a in an amusement park that sort of thing. Um, so you could go in and make this measurement and find out how much that lifting was occurring with the with the camera and, and visualize it as well. So higher on the, the PF curve or the DIPF curve. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. So here we have, you know, sort of the PF curve. Um, um, so the idea is to try to get your technology as high on that curve as possible. Find the defect um, is early in the life of the asset as possible. Um, a lot of times what ends up happening is the um, this this sort of circular thing happens where if you don't identify the root cause, you you sort of repair something, maybe a looseness that's caused from something else that's gotten worse over time and worn its worn itself loose. Um, so you re, you do that and this continual and then eventually it goes, comes back and then it's it's cyclical. Whereas with the the RSM, what, what we like to, to try to educate people is get into this um, design and installation and commissioning side of things so that you get more bang for your buck and putting it in in that area. And so we'll talk about here uh, one about a commissioning of a new facility, a mining facility in Mexico with Gold Corp, where they had brought it in um, to bring a new facility on online and they found this tank. Uh, this was one of the first things that they looked at. Um, every, every what they did is they did acceptance criteria with the camera to every new asset. So as this facility was coming online, um, anything um, that was coming online had to be looked at with this, um, with the camera, and they found this. And here's the back view of that tank. And of course, the conversation goes something like this: um, you know, hey, there's a problem with this tank to the OEM. The OEM says, um, nope, this is um, uh, not um, not our issue. You know, everything was fine. And um, then you show them the video, and that conversation quickly changes. Um, and that's the case here. They said, yeah, you're right. We've got to get in and, and fix that. And so the OEM um, did come in and fix it on their dime. And then this was the repair shot um, where everything looks good. Still some movement, which is normal to have some, but just wasn't acceptable for it to be at the level it was before. Um, and then there was also an SO2, um, 500 degrees C gas flowing through these pipes. And um, they found a heavy vibration. It would have caused a failure. Um, it would have eventually caused fatiguing, caused a failure, which would have been deadly um, at that point. And so this turned out to be an as designed and as built spec did not match. So they sent it back to the engineers and turned out they just didn't build it right. They designed it right, but didn't build it right. And so this was a catch by them. Again, tying commissioning to this. Um, again, it kind of goes to the speed at which you can do do this. Um, okay, so let's talk about how it's complementary to route-based methods. Um, there's a, a large group of users who just simply tie it to route-based methods in the sense that they do their normal routes. You know, this isn't necessarily something everybody's going out and replacing routes with, but when they get an alarm, this is a technology that they will go to. Um, so because they can also get a high one times and it can be 20 different things. I mean, some are more common than others, right? I mean, you know, you got your, you know, sort of looseness, you know, there's some things that might generally be 
um, more common, but sometimes you're kind of chasing that that vibration. And so in this case study, you're going through and showing you sort of the the vibration levels um, that the uh, that the thing was um, experiencing uh, the high two times in this case. Um, and so they checked everything. You know, alignment was good, soft, no soft foot issues. Um, and so they brought in um, the IRSM camera to take a look. And immediately when they, you know, they shot it, and here's the here's sort of the um, standard um, HD um, video of the motor running. Um, and then they'll apply the motion amplification footage, and you'll be able to see um, with that the, the motor vibrating, which you expect. You know, everything's everything's going to move to some degree, but it's really trying to find out what's the cause, what's the root cause of this vibration issue, which turns out to be really really kind of challenging in this um, in this issue because you don't always you know look in these areas or think to look or put a sensor down here and this turns out to be the case where this th there was separation um, in this um, in this in this video and or separation in this um, um, you know in the video showing uh, from the base and the support there um, and again really trivial to show with the camera but very challenging to be able to do something like that with um, with normal um, normal contact sensors. Um, talk about another one. Uh, this was again a, a, a route-based uh, measurement, um, or, you know, kind of tying in with route-based, where um, the amplification was um, brought in. You know, they get a high vibration reading, triggers the alarm. What I liked about this is that it was immediately corrected. They were able to bring out the camera, get an alarm level, bring out the camera, find the issue with the camera, and then immediately fix it. Turned out to be a trivial issue. Right. And that's great. I mean, that's in some ways, that's what you want to find that that it is. But it's really about finding that issue um, again. And then with the camera, it becomes a little bit a little bit easier to do that. And so they go in and, and find this base sliding um, and, it, and it turned out to be that they needed to tighten it down. And so they were able to go in, look at it. And this was all done in the course of of, of 30 minutes. I mean, this is a really quick process from 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 going from, um, you know, sort of getting the alarm, getting the camera making the repair and then um, and then moving on. So here we're showing um, showing the sort of the motion and the vibration of of this thing sliding. Um, and then we'll show a little shot here where they issue the work order, um, tighten down all the hold down hold holding bolts. And then I like this because they show in this case study show a couple um, shots of them actually doing the repair. And then vibration, 60% reduction in vibration levels. And there's a before and after. So, um, so the the other piece, uh, the next one in terms of where it fits into the reliability would be um, new types of assets. Um, so with with a lack of coverage. So the first one that I want to you know focus on is just piping. I mean, this is a real big. This is a real big issue and it's a safety issue often and it's just a big challenge and where do you even start right where do you start so with a camera you're able to set it down and, and skin in very large very large area in a very short amount of time um, and be able to see you know all this all this motion and then pick and choose what is good what is bad measure you can measure it all you know and um, and then make a sort of a course of action um, and again, with live amplification, you set the camera down, you see it. You don't even have to take a recording. You scan the entire thing in a matter of seconds and be able to see all the vibration everywhere. Um, so that's one. And then here's another piping um, that where, you know, you go in and, and have a little bit more complicated environment. Here's, again, amplified and unamplified uh, footage. Right side's amplified, left side's unamplified. Uh, and then to be able to go in and make a decision. Here, it was quick enough that they could do this entire um, this entire area with different scenarios with you know different pumps running um, so that to be able to see you know what was going on and then make a decision right then and there again real quick no you know no outfitting with sensors this is all done pretty pretty rapidly um, okay so talk about a little bit about broadening the coverage so again um, you might have a certain percentage of your assets covered with some technologies, some with accelerometers, some with others. Um, but the idea is that because the speed of the of the camera is, is so quick and it covers such a large area that you can encompass a larger set of assets. So maybe that small motor um, 
and that a, a pump just that don't get covered um, now can be covered. You know, you can look at it, um, it, you know, pretty quickly. And so this is one of those um, that the operator knew of the problem. He, he's known it's been existed for a while, but no action was being taken. Um, but again, if, if you're able to just spend 30 minutes on the problem, then, then that becomes something that um, people sign off on. Um, and so it becomes easy um, to be able to get the camera in. So again, here you go in and look at it. We're, we're sort of chasing this vibration by scanning around. We look at the feet um, to be able to see. We determine that one foot's not vibrating. Um, so that's good. Um, let's continue the scan around the asset to be able to see. Um, again, and this is something that just might not be covered, um, you know, because it, it's, it's just not um, the, the, the criticality, the value of the asset. Oh, so we can see one, one, one side of that um, vibrating, and then um, we can see that foot now vibrating. And this turns out to be the issue. We catch it. Um, it. It turns out to be that that bolt was drilled at an angle when it was installed. This fault flaw had been there um, for, for, from the beginning and um, pulling it back out and then re-drilling re that at the proper angle ended up being the, uh, being the solution. So um, a comprehensive scan, this is another area where, again, it's just, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and this is one of those, um, one of those um, things where you go through and uh, you're really surprised to see. This was a scan, a uh, complete scan. It wasn't, no, there was no something that brought them to this. They were going to do a scan of these, um, of, these, of these pumps and the motors and, and uh, look at that. And they came across this issue. So again, you know, this is one of those that would have been a real, real challenge. Um, we're going to see a shot here in a second uh, where it's a concrete uh, issue um, being loose. And you can see this lifting in this concrete. Again, to be able to get an accelerometer or some other technology in here would have been a challenge. And that's why, you know, sort of we say this is a really good complementary tool um, to be able to get in there and look at, um, look at this sort of thing uh, with, uh, with a camera. Okay, so we're, we're getting close to, to the end. Um, I want to talk, we just did a big um, software release. So I just kind of talk about some of the, the new features here in, in 3.0. Um, we, we talked about live motion amplification. That actually just got released. Set the camera down, no wait time. Um, you're, you're live. You can scan areas um, in, a, in an instant and very rapidly um, with the technology. Um, so also... Um, just sort of um, uh, motion vectors. Um, you know, these are kind of cool because they really show relationships really easy. So you can really help people educate people with um, things like phase. You know, one vector is going up on one side while the other is going down, um, that sort of thing. Um, really just demonstrate uh, motion really, really well. Just another way of being able to show it. Um, you don't have to amplify the video to put these on. So if that becomes sort of a, a distraction, you can put the vectors on. Um, transient ROIs, um, kind of kind of cool. Um, you know, up until now, it really was about a fixed object that was sort of vibrating. Now you have the capability of tracking motion all through the video, measuring the the global motion of that object, the dynamic motion, so the vibration that's sort of vibrating, you know, as that thing moves. So like overhead cranes and and robots, you know, you can actually measure vibration and get spectrum off moving objects. Uh, dynamic and um, and transient data, so like AC and DC kind of thinking, um, all 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 from the video, um, and then transient motion amplification is 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 inter interesting. In addition to the transient ROI, you can you can now um, measure um, and amplify um, footage of things that are moving. So things that move all the way through the scene largely or sometimes could be a challenge for motion amplification but that's sort of been the with with progression of the technology you can now amplify the big and the small motion at the same time if an object moves all the way through the scene you can amplify that um, and show the little tiny vibrations like on this cutting tool that will progress all the way through the video you it, it, the motion amplification can handle that to be able to show small vibrations on top of um, large um, large vibrations and then finally, uh, the last one is um, mo motion map. So um, this is a cool technology that um, that uh, that was requested by um, a lot of users, and so it allows you to do a color color map. So so this is motion map, and you can um, you can show individual frequencies of motion. So you can highlight in sort of like a thermal image. Red is more intense, and blue is less intense, and and show 
where the motions are, and this really helps you understand relationships. You can combine this with the motion amplification and, and, and the various other tools, but it's a real quick way to scan, scan an asset or scan a scene and see all the different um, relationships between um, all the different objects. So, okay, so I think we're about the 10, 10 minute mark. I'm gonna stop there and um, handle any questions. Um, I will say, I'm not sure what the experience was. It's a fairly large amount of people. And um, I know the internet's probably being stretched to its max. So um, I will say this, if some of those videos, you know, on my end, uh, they're all fluid and, and, and smooth. If some of those did not come through for you, don't worry, we'll make this, um, we'll, you know, this, this presentation will be, um, be made available, and then if, if um, you know, we can, we can also handle the um, uh, uh, being able to make the, some of the videos available as well. Um, if you, if, if for some reason on your end, the sort of the download speeds weren't 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 very fast. Awesome. Well, I look good on my screen, so hopefully the recording then that I was doing um, should should all look pretty good. So, um, as we mentioned at the beginning, since this was recorded, we'll have it up online. So um you know definitely check that out um or reach out to jeff and his team and they can hook you up with with those examples but um yeah did not disappoint that was really cool really great information um hopefully everybody got a lot out of that um we'll just hit a couple questions that i kind of saw some common themes so we'll hit those and then as i mentioned at the beginning since we're a little low on time and, and we have a lot of folks um we'll be sure all these questions get over to um, Jeff and his crew, and they can follow up with you guys um, offline and, and make sure all those questions are answered. So uh, just in, in that spirit, um, a lot, lot of folks were kind of asking around um, alarm levels, so different um, kind of questions about how do you set alarms, how do you kind of determine the severity um, of what you're seeing, and kind of at what point you're, you're really needing to make a jump and, and make some uh some repairs or decisions yeah yeah that's a good question so yeah I, I think for the technology um you can you can show the you know the the uh, measurements in displacement or velocity um so you know this is really generally a, a mostly used as a troubleshooting tool not something we have the continuous sort of monitoring capability um but um for us really uh, the same the same rules apply, you know, half of an inch per second is bad on a, on a motor, then it's going to be the same um, with, with, with us. So there aren't necessarily pre-built alarms, you know, with it, you know, it's more of a, the tool that gets you that data to make those decisions. Um, but the same rules still apply. There's nothing, you know, no new rules of vibration. So if you go through and measure it um, and the values are, are normally too high at that, you know, at 30 hertz, you know, half an inch per second is bad. Um, for a certain type of motor, then that same rule will apply. That said, there are a lot of cases where it's absolute. It doesn't matter what the values are. That's a problem. And best practices dictate that you take that out at your next um, downtime. Like, for example, a soft foot, you know, or, or um, um, you know, sort of a severe misalignment or things like that. But like, um, you know, certain levels of looseness or, you know, we saw that concrete um, moving that's those sorts of things are, are dead giveaway so lots of times you know you can make the measurement and get those values but but it's the video itself that a lot of times people make that um, make that repair based off of just seeing what what the type of movement it is awesome okay and then we'll do one more but again it, it, it kind of comes from several different folks asking similar things so what how do you handle um kind of things like what if there's steam in the area or different types of light reflections um different temperatures different just kind of con conflicting visuals that might get in the way how does how does the um, system handle that yeah that's a really good question so yeah so we've added a new element when you put a sensor on something it's like in contact with it right there's nothing in between you and you and um uh, it, and now we've got this camera. It's an environmental, you know, situation. So steam's a good example. Um, we we sort of have a rule of thumb. If you can see it, you can measure it. Um, steam, you know, is interesting. You can actually get rid of that um, quite a bit. Steam generally has it prefers certain frequencies, and and when you filter, you can filter a lot of that out. Um, light flicker is the same. Uh, there's ways to make sure when you collect the data that it doesn't even get in the data. But for example, it may if it does get present, you can e easily filter that out. Um, so there's some some things that you can do to eliminate um, those um, 
those those things in the data. Um, some of that's done through filtering and some other some other techniques. Okay, awesome. Well, let's um, wrap things up here. Um, again, great presentation, Jeff. Um, clearly engaged a lot of folks, a lot of questions coming in, a lot of just you know thanks and things like that. So um, again, folks, we'll we'll get those questions answered, um, but just want to make everybody aware of the webinars that we have coming up, and we've got more that we're going to be planning, so this, this list is going to grow, um, but tomorrow we're going to be talking ultrasound, so that's um, our wheelhouse here at UE Systems, um, so if you're able, tomorrow at 1 o'clock, we're going to hop back on here and, and talk all things ultrasound with uh, Adrian Mester. I know a lot of you uh, know him and have seen him out and about at, at different conferences and things, so um, definitely make plans to join us for that. And then next week, we're going to have uh, James um, Kovacevic from Iridicio, another um, conference favorite. Um, and he's actually on with us. So, James, do you want to say a few words about what your presentation is going to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for uh, the opportunity. Um, so, job mapping, how to develop great job plans. So there's a lot of conversation going around about how detailed do we get with job plans? How do we develop those job plans that are going to be repeatable, consistent? How do we get good time estimates? All those things around, you know, structuring great job plans. Um, the presentation next week, we'll walk through a method known as job mapping that allows us to essentially break down the activity that we're doing to the various levels of detail required and assembling that into a good job package. Um, it's a visual technique. It's highly hands-on. We're going to walk through that approach and make sure everyone has the opportunity to develop a good job plan. And continuing on with, you know, Iridicio supports, as we walk through that, I highly encourage you guys to do a job map, convert that to a job plan, and send it on to myself or Sean or one of the other coaches at Iridicio. We'll be more than happy to look at those and go through that with you. Um, that's about it. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Great. Great. So an invite for that, um, those that for next week, those will all be going out um, on Monday. Um, maybe we'll try and get some of those links up on social before that. Um, and then next Friday, um, a, another UE system specific. Um, but for those of you that are um, have been with UE systems, we're going to kind of just do a little refresh on how to get the most out of your Ultra Pro 15,000. So if that's of interest for you guys, we'll we'll be doing that one as well. So again, the point just being let's let's try and all you know stay together on this and and provide as much information and help and support um, on various different um, initiatives that you guys all have going on. And um, you know we're we're really thankful for um, everybody being able to kind of pitch in and, and help us out on this. So. Um, with that, there's our contact info. You've got my email address there, our office phone, um, website. Um, any questions you've got, um, I can, you know, get you guys in touch with Jeff. I can get you guys in touch with the folks at Iridicio. Um, so don't don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, but again, appreciate you all spending your uh, lunch hour with us. I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and hopefully we'll see some of you guys here tomorrow. Um, and again, next week. And in the meantime, we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys later. Have a great day.